Okay, so here we are today fixing condition on a triumph stack, Rupert. Um, problem I had last week, the low tension um, sender electronic ignition module that I fitted inside the distributor failed. Um, failed completely um, because there was no signal to the coil. Then there was no spark to the spark plugs. Complete and utter failure. Fuck all you can do about it, nothing you can do to fix it except for replacing it. So, <coughs> splashed out, bought this nice Petronix um, Igniter 2 and it's associated flamethrower 2 coil, which together um, should increase the intensity of the spark. Um, now it's a very, very similar setup, so it works on a Hall effect trigger inside the distributor cap here. Um, if I pull that off, there inside the distributor you can see the red block is the sensor. There, pull the rotor off, and then you've got this fella here, which is a magnet which sits on top of the original lobes of the distributor. And as it whizzes past the red trigger, it uh, sends a pulse down the wire into the distributor into the coil, which then activates the but it's this bit here that's failed, so I'm going to replace that completely outright. <coughs> the only way forward. So now removed all the bits that we don't need. Um, so we've got the basic uh, distributor shell there. Um, we've taken out the old six volt coil and its ballast resistor. Um, ballast resistors are in place on these older cars because um, the starter motor steals all the current, doesn't leave enough of the distributor. Taken out the uh, very rare and valuable um, Triumph uh, Stag Lucas base plate. I don't need this kit, I'm going to keep it. We're taking out the 40 um, power spark module, the magnet which goes over the lobes on the distributor, and the rotor arm which will be going back on. So, what goes back on again is this uh, nice uh, electronics igniter 2 ignition system. So, let's bit out of focus then. It's igniter 2 electronic ignition system. As you can see, it comes with its own base plate uh, which replaces the original base plate in the Lucas distributor and it comes with again a little magnet sender a sensor that sits over the top of the sensor so let's fit this um, and start the wiring up you can see there's two wires on this a red and a black the black is the signal um, to the coil the red is a 12 volt feed and they give you about four meters of it so I shall run the, uh, the live feed from the back of the car perhaps the only thing you really have to consider on this is there's a post on the top half of the plate. As you can see, this plate is designed to operate independently of the base plate. Now that post sits onto here, which is the vacuum advance. Now at the moment it's loose on the distributor because I had to take that screw out to take the old one off. But the idea is, as the engine sacks more of a vacuum, uh, the ignition advances uh, by that rod pulling that way and rotating the top plate. Clever stuff, eh? So, this is it all fitted in now. So, we've got the two wires coming through a grommet on the side of the carburetor, sorry, the carburetor, distributor body. Um, we've got the, the, a bit of flex on the two wires so that um, obviously the base plate can move without stretching these. Uh, I probably need to give it le less flex than that. There's also an earth wire that mounts the top plate to the base plate. So this top plate is obviously in danger of being insulated um, because of the various bits and bobs are connected via rubber. So that's all now earthed um, and completes the circuit for that particular device and obviously just screwed the base plate back in in the place of the original, making sure of course that that vacuum advance um, was properly connected, which it is, and you notice I put the screw back on that body. So next things, we've got the magnet which goes over the top of the um, the cam inside the uh, distributor. I think that's as far as it goes, to be honest. Maybe it goes a little bit further, I don't know. Should go a little bit further than that. Why is it not going on? No, that's as far as it goes. So, cam goes on. And then the rotor. That's at least gone further than that. Why is it not going on? Just need two thumbs to ease it down into position. And that's down now. And then the rotor, which is a skanky old rotor, I know, but I'll replace that at some point. It goes on top. And then once that's in place, the distributor cap goes back on, which is up here, um, and the circuit's complete. Uh, I'm not convinced that's gone down far enough, to be honest. Um, I might look at that. While I'm messing around with the, um, the rotor arm on this, uh, basically the, um, 
magnetic sensor <coughs> is a fair bit thicker on the top than the old unit for the power spark, which is not a substantial um, unit. So I need to try and work out what I'm doing about that. But in the meantime, I thought I'd do a quick comparison on the differences in the size between the two units. Um, so I don't know if it says an awful lot about the power spark uh, being a much smaller unit, um, but it is, ooh, I'd say it's about half the size or thereabouts. Um, there you go. Right, let's work out this bloody rotor arm now. The problem I've got is that the rotor arm doesn't go down far enough onto the post, so it wiggles. Uh, and also, it's going to then bottom out in the uh, in the top of the cap here and push that post in too far. So obviously we want the rotor arm to be sitting firmly, but I'm not getting that at the moment. So I think I'm going to call Petronix and find out. The rotor arm machine was resolved by using a slightly different pattern part, um, which is actually a fair bit shorter, about a millimetre and a half shorter in its overall height. I can't really see if my phone's in the way. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Good night, Vienna. Um, which is a fair bit shorter in its uh, in its overall. You can see the old one is poking down below. Um, but anyway, once the the other rotor went on there, um, it worked a treat. Next. I've mounted the new um, power spark coil in there, sorry, flamethrower coil, power spark, that's Freudian, wasn't it? So three flamethrower two coilers in. Um, basically the trick with those is to make sure they don't touch any part of the engine block, um, and that's nice and free. I'll, uh, I'll obviously do the bolts up shortly. Um, I had to modify the mount in order for it to fit because it wouldn't, slightly fatter than the uh, the Lucas thing. Next thing I need to do is put some terminals on these nuts on the top and then wire it up. It started raining now in the time modern spring tradition. So what I've basically done, the coil's been wired up in exactly the same way as it was um, before. Um, so with the 12 volt feed, rather than going to the uh, to the ballast resistor, it now goes direct to the coil. Um, there's also this 12 volt feed um, from the starter motor, which was originally the unballasted feed. Um, I'm not going to mess around with that right now because it's raining and I'm getting wet. Um, the other thing I've done is I've wired up the signal to the negative side of the of the coil. So with that all in place, no it's not, it's still loose, so I'm going to see if it starts. And if it does, I'm putting it in the garage and I'll finish tomorrow. Right, so fuel pump is filling. started really needs um, tuning up now there we go burst into life so we know it works from a cold start on the non-ballasted feed so let's pop it away so, see if it's a bit wet including me burbly 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 Start tomorrow. That's good right, so it's all nicely warmed up now. And what we're going to do basically now is to set the ignition time. Strobe light for time marks on the front fully. Yeah, it's the down there. And obviously, I've moved the coil out of the way and got the distributor so that I can shift it to adjust the ignition. And the idea is that I work this here, you can see the strobe is fucking light down there, and I can see currently that's about 16 to 4 o'clock in the sense. If you just go a little bit further, I mean obviously I would do this problem there that the, uh, this is a bit tight still, so I'm we'll just Slacken up a little bit further. There we go. Let's see what that's going now. Right, that's gone too far now, that's coiled. So I'll go back a tiny bit. That's 12. So, just a tiny bit of a movement. Near the end, it sounds a little sweet just by moving the ignition time. 
that's pretty much about it. So that's the addition that I've done to when you've bolted everything up and we're away.